with the halogen bromine, a practice now banned in nations around the world. Guess what else is in the halogen family? Fluoride. Ladies and gentlemen, Alex Jones here. In 1924, the federal government did the right thing and encouraged salt producers to add iodine. It's the good halogen on the periodic table. And the results are on record, reports documented, a 15-point IQ increase in areas that had previously been deficient in iodine. Bottom line, iodine is important. Unbound, clean, in a glycerin base, nascent iodine was the answer for myself and my family. You will find Survival Shield nascent iodine exclusively at InfoWarsLife.com. InfoWars Life Survival Shield nascent iodine isn't just for emergencies. I take it every day. That's InfoWarsLife.com or call toll-free 888-253-3139. Introducing Pro One. All of your filtration in one system, portable, on the go. No more do you have two or three filters to just reduce sodium fluoride. You have a system that cuts out the sodium fluoride and up to 95% of hydrofluorosilicic acid. Advanced manufacturing technology combines silver impregnated white ceramic with new Aquamedics advanced media for removal of fluoride and other heavy metals, all in one filter element. It is the only one that does it and out of the gate. We have it discounted at 10% off with promo code WATER. This is the only system that in one unit helps reduce or remove pesticides, herbicides, chloramines, ammonia, and chlorine, hydrofluorosilicic acid, the most common form of fluoride not covered by other fluoride filter brands, and sodium hexafluorosilicate. Get your Pro Pure with a new Pro One filter today at InfoWarsStore.com or by calling 888-253-3139. Alex Jones here with a message to fellow freedom lovers. The prognosis for the entire planetary economic system runs from bad to worse. The globalist model is to shut down societies and starve patriots out until they acquiesce to the global takeover. That's why we've assembled the most vital and important preparedness items at InfoWarsShop.com. These are items that I did research on, that I personally use. You've got the life straw, so you can turn fetid water into safe water anywhere you go. The KTOR hand crank generator to charge up key equipment during power outages or out in the field. Strategic relocation, third edition by Joel Skousen. When disaster strikes by Matthew Stein. Therosafe used by Homeland Security to protect yourself during any radiological event. Hand crank shortwave AM FM radios. Everything that we've researched and found to be the best is available at InfoWarsShop.com and your purchase makes our InfoWar possible. We're getting prepared. Are you? InfoWarsShop.com. Take you live to the Central Texas Command Center and the heart of the resistance. It's Alex Jones. Welcome back to the Alex Jones Show. I'm David Knight. We've been talking about the police state, about the surveillance state, and how they're losing the info war. Still very powerful on the streets, still treating citizens as targets. But how do we roll this back? Well, I think. The key thing is that people need to understand on a broader basis what's really at stake here. People in Albuquerque understand because it has gotten to such a bad degree there. Will people in other areas of the country understand what the federal government is doing as it pushes the militarization of the police, as it wants to use the military as police? Now, there was an interesting thing that happened uh, in Belgium this last week where Obama was asked a question about the surveillance state. But before we go to that clip, I want you to hear that clip. We've seen Mike Rogers, the cheerleader for the police state, as head of the House Intelligence Committee. We've seen him say that he's no longer going to run for office. He's going to step down and go into talk radio. Why? Because I don't think he can win there. This is a Republican district that they've carved out in Michigan, but it's always been close, going two or three points one way or the other in the presidential elections. And I think for the last year, he has been the spokesperson for the NSA. I think he has totally lost his credibility. Just last week, Mike Rogers and Dutch Ruppersberger, he's a Democrat from Maryland, introduced from the House Intelligence Committee a bill that they called End Bulk Collection Act. End the Bulk Collection Act. Well, as we always see from these 
congressional bills, it does exactly the opposite thing. It doesn't end bulk collection. It makes provision for how the data is going to be bulk collected and who's going to store it. All they're doing is moving it from their servers, essentially, to the servers of their corporate entities that they partner with. So here he has absolutely no credibility. Keith Alexander is leaving the NSA. They're trying to put a different face on it because look at how Obama was received in Belgium. People there are very concerned, probably even more so than Americans are, about how they're being surveilled. And so they had a questioner ask him about the surveillance state. And Obama gives this rambling answer, and there is absolutely no applause at the end, even though the guy who comes up and takes over kind of tells people, you know, uh, that's it. That's all the questions. <laughs> hint, hint. Uh, now's the time for applause. They had everything except an applause sign, but they couldn't get anything. Just the sound of one man clapping. Listen to this. Checks, balances, legal processes. Um, the good news is that I'm very confident that it can be achieved. Uh, and I'm also confident that the core values that America has always believed in, in terms of privacy, rule of law, uh, individual rights, uh, that that has guided uh, you know, the United States for, for many years and will continue to guide us into the future. Okay. okay. Thank you very much, everybody. Okay. Thank you again. Okay. One person starts to clap and stops. The last question. Thank you very much for coming. That was the last question. Now's your chance. You need to applaud. <laughs> He's kind of awkwardly walking off. The way he is exiting is the same way that Keith Alexander is exiting, the same way that Mike Rogers is exiting. Nobody believes it anymore. We were told last summer that we, we saw a meeting of the uh, Defense Department Public Relations, and we had a young lady stand up and said, nobody believes us anymore. It's just mindless propaganda. Absolutely. They keep telling us that it's just metadata, and it doesn't matter. People need to wake up to that aspect of it. Here's an article that was uh, on our website, how the NSA can use metadata to predict your personality. And the person who put forward this study said, we see a lot of comments along the lines of, it's only metadata. It's not personal. And it only gets personal when a human looks into it. We wanted to show an example at a small scale of what you might be able to do with that data on just things like how long a call lasts, when the calls are made, where the calls are made. And what they did was they took the standard personality types that uh, psychologists would come up with, neurotic, open, extroverted, agreeable, conscientious, those different types of things. And they just looked at simple things like basic phone use, the number of calls, uh, active user behavior, like the time it took for the subject to answer a call, simple things like that, location, the regularity of their calling routine. And they were able to pretty accurately, much better than just random, they were able to profile people. See, they can predict where you're going to be in the next 24 hours looking at your metadata just as accurately or more accurately than you can. In many ways, the metadata is more intrusive than just listening to your phone call or reading your email. They can actually glean a lot more from that. So people need to wake up. I think people are waking up. You see the, re the frosty reception that Obama got. You see these guys are having to leave. They cannot allow Mike Rogers to stand for re-election and lose. That would be a huge black eye to the security state. But guess what, Mike? You've already lost. We've got your number. And I can't wait until he gets on the air and people start calling him. That's going to be, <laughs> that's going to be some good radio that might actually give him a boost in his ratings. One other thing on the police state before we get back to uh, callers here. This is something that came out of the Washington Post. And it was an article, we talked about it briefly yesterday. It was uh, Franz Kafka meets the National Security Agency. And of course, Kafka loved to write stories about the mindless, unresponsive bureaucracy, stonewalling people. Here's a guy who was trying to get information about his father who had been a syndicated columnist and he was illegally wiretapped by the CIA in 1963, a very, very long time ago. This information should now be declassified. He tried to get information from the NSA. He tried to get it from the CIA. Nobody's going to talk to him. He actually was able to get some information from the FBI. But what I thought was the most interesting thing was the response from the NSA.
This is from their chief of staff of the Freedom of Information Act Privacy Appeal Authority. And she says, as a result of my review, I've concluded that the appropriate response is to continue to neither confirm or deny the existence or non-existence of any intelligence material on your father. To do so when challenged under the FOIA Act would re result in the exposure of intelligence information, sources, and methods which could harm our national security and severely undermine NSA activities in general. This is something that happened 50 years ago when they were looking at a journalist. And I'm sure it would tell us things about the NSA that we already know, really. But what I thought was most interesting about this was that this person was chief of staff. They've got an entire crew of bureaucrats in their FOIA department who don't give any information out. <laughs> That's where the Kafka comes in. They've got an entire staff. She's got people working for her. And they're going to, if they're going to not give information about a journalist who was tapped 60, uh, 63, 50 years ago, if they're not going to give information out about him, they're not going to give any information about anybody. But she's got an entire staff that she's chief of. This is the kind of bloated police state bureaucracy that is out of control, that is both stupid and offensive and dangerous at the same time. This is what we're currently seeing. This is what we have to fight. We're winning in many respects, but there's a lot still to be done, especially with people not understanding what's going on with militarization of the police. As we pointed out, the two billion bullets, the armored personnel carriers that Homeland Security is getting people. These are the things we're very concerned about. Let's take a couple of more calls on this subject. Uh, Jerry in Ohio, you've been on for a long time. How you doing, Dave? Doing fine. Thanks for holding. Go ahead. Um, yeah, I just wanted to make a, a couple quick comments here. Uh, <clears throat> in Northeast Ohio here, the, uh, they're really trying to get the public to embrace this, uh, this mafia police state. Uh, they're even going into these churches and forming anti-violence church programs where if you see something, uh, you, know, you know, you're to watch and to tell. See something, and say something, really, yeah. Uh, they're, they're really boosting that to get everybody to spy on everybody up here. And with all the cameras and all the, uh, you know, they got the streets all laid out in grids. See, Jerry, I find that so disturbing because, you know, the way things got rolled back in East Germany was when people, they, they were shooting people who were trying to escape, trying to get over the wall. They had guards who were shooting people. You know the way that stopped? That stopped when people met at churches and had a silent vigil in mass. They started walking to protect, to protest that. And the police, and the uh, the guards at the uh, at the gates there in East Germany stood down, but it was led by the poli by the churches, and the churches are the ones who have a lot of moral authority who could try to get people to organize against the wholesale slaughter of people, against the escalating violence. But instead, as you point out, so many of them are becoming quislings for the state, spying on their fellow citizens. Go ahead. And also, you know, they're uh, like if you go to a festival or like a demolition derby or something, you know, you see these stormtroopers uh, standing around watching everybody. And, uh, you know, people are just getting so accustomed up here in northeast Ohio to seeing these uh, military helicopters going over. Uh, we're seeing drones up here. Uh, you know, uh, they bring out their military in the parades and people just clap and, you know, and uh, go crazy for them and and they they'll set like an army tank or a jeep or with machine guns out in the middle of a parking lot at a school where kids can go out and climb on it and oh it's so wonderful you know that our military has these weapons to defend us what are they going to think when they when they start rolling down our streets and they have chinese and mexican troops in them yeah and they're yeah. telling people to go back home or they'll be uh killed well, you know, and, uh, it's sad, as you mentioned, every time we have a public event anymore, it seems like a, as they start driving down the streets in their militarized vehicles, it's starting to look more and more like a May Day parade in communist uh, Russia or China, isn't it? You know, where they portray their military might in our face all the time. But, uh, but yeah, they're, they're going into the churches up here, and they're telling people, if you see something or you're not sure about something, call the police. Yeah. I mean, that is really getting uh, uh, down to where uh, uh, 
Uh, pe- people have no rights up here at all. They, they have township people that if you build a little thing to put mulch in, they'll drive around, they'll take pictures of it and take pictures of your house, and they'll report you, and then they'll come out to try to raise your taxes like you're doing home improvement. Oh, yeah. Oh, I yeah. Mean, That's where it like starts. Con- 